I am Andrew Hutchings. I'm known everywhere as Linux Jedi, um, and I'm the Chief Contributions Officer for MariaDB Foundation. Now, that's a little bit of an odd job title, I know. Um, my background uh, is I worked on open source software for a very long time, uh, including MySQL. I've worked for uh, the MariaDB Corporation for a little bit, and now I'm at the MariaDB Foundation. I've also worked on several other uh, high profile open source software. So my background is quite vast and I try and bring all, all this into my role here. Now, Kai mentioned before, uh, the three pillars of the Meridian Foundation are openness, adoption, and continuity. And I like to think that my role kind of blends into all of them in some way. So part of my role uh, is I aim to make con the contribution process into MariaDB server as easy as it can be. And that kind of falls a little bit into the continuity part. Um, and I'm trying to reduce the time between a pull request into MariaDB server being opened and it getting closed either through merging or uh, some other reason. Uh, but not at the cost of kind of the quality or the community communication for the given pull request. Uh, I create uh, the contribution metrics for MariaDB server, and that kind of falls into the openness side of things. And I also try and work with open source communities and uh, the uh, distributions, etc to try and improve MariaDB for them. So that kind of falls a little bit into the adoption umbrella. So I want to give some examples of the type of contributions because everyone, when they hear contributions, thinks code contributions. And some of the other ones have actually been discussed today, such as funding. So uh, Soren's field is more to deal with the funding side of things, but funding MariaDB Foundation helps us grow the community around the project. So every little bit, it helps there. Then we've got documentation. So that's more uh, in uh, the foundation's forte, but uh, the more the documentation improves, the easier it is for people to adopt and use the project. Uh, as far as community goes, we have quite a vast community in lots and lots of different places. So Zulip is our main kind of live access thing. We have the mailing lists, there are also uh, Reddit groups, there's uh, all sorts of different places. There's a community Slack as well that's owned by the corporation, but we're also there. So um, we in the foundation can all be everywhere all at once. So um, helping out with community questions is another great way of contributing to MariaDB, even if it's not in code. Uh, translations is a fantastic way to contribute. So I am was part of the English education system, and we are not taught languages very well. My wife is actually first language Welsh. Uh, I actually lived there for four years, and I still cannot speak barely a word of it, you know. So I'm not very good at the translation thing. We, you know, we always need help there because there are always new error messages coming in, new uh, different messages coming into MariaDB server that need translating. And also, we'd like eventually parts of the knowledge base to be translated into many, many different languages to make it easier uh, to adopt. Then, of course, you've got usage, bug reports, feature requests, etc. Using MariaDB itself, uh, especially the newer versions that are coming out, and giving us feedback on that really helps us out because we know what we're getting right, we know what we're getting wrong, we know what is broken, so that when we get to the LTS releases, we know that everything is as nice and stable as it can be. Um, so I want to talk about one case in particular, which um, is Intel. Um, Intel makes some great non-code contributions to MariaDB server. They do provide some code where they can as well, but it's a little bit difficult for them for various kind of legal kind of reasons that I won't get into. But various things they do for us, like uh, they constantly benchmark and test various uh, versions of MariaDB and are feeding back information to us. And I believe um, the a case has already been brought up today of where um, there was a issue where um, it, there was a potential regression in a future version of MariaDB and um, Intel found it, fed back information, told us roughly how to fix it, and we fixed it based on that. Um, they supply us with hardware, um, so we can test things against the latest hardware. It makes it part of our build bot system. 
They provide financial assistance to the Meridian Foundation and Steve Shaw from Intel is part of the board of the Meridian Foundation. So there are many different ways that Intel are contributing that aren't necessarily just throwing code over the wall to us. Um, so there'll always be places, things you can help with, even if it's not just with code. Now, why contributions are important. Um, it gives us a much more diverse input from a range of life experiences. So if you've got just one company contributing to a code base and everyone lives in the US, you're not really meeting the use cases necessarily of people in Europe or in Asia, et cetera. So getting lots of contributions from different companies, different people, you get a much more broad feature set. You get a much more broad use case. Um, the project goes in the direction that the users want, not necessarily led by just one individual company, uh, which I think is fantastic. Um, sometimes marketing-led things can go where chasing the money for that company and not necessarily what the general open source user who's installing off a Debian distro actually wants. And it means that you can fix things that are important to you um, if you want to contribute bug fixes. So sometimes there are paper cut bugs, um, usually low hanging fruit kind of things that in many projects just get ignored because they're not high monetary value for the company that's actually writing or coding the project. But it could be important to you and you know how to fix it. So, you know, or at least finding a bug report and giving us more attention to it so that we know it's there. We can actually fix it and as we're not as incentivized kind of marketing wise to do otherwise, if you see what I mean. And it's building a real community around a project. Um, not really much else I can say about that. You know, having quite a diverse group of people contributing means it's quite a wide community. Another part of my role, as I discussed, is metrics. So uh, at the moment, I've implemented two different ways of collecting metrics on contributions so far. There'll be a lot more coming, and I'll discuss a little bit of that later on. The first of all is um, collecting metrics from Git itself, uh, from the uh, Git log, uh, using something called Git DM, which stands for Git Data Miner. It was a project designed for the Linux kernel tree. Uh, we've modified it a little bit to suit our needs better. For example, um, it, it was designed to mine the entire kernel tree, every single branch, etc which doesn't suit our needs so well because we have a lot of feature branches that are in development that might not actually make merging, uh, might actually be merged in the future, et cetera. So we just kind of filter out anything but the branches that we want to focus on. So 10.3, 10.4, 10.5, 10.6, 10, uh, the latest branch. Um, we also uh, deliberately filter by date ranges so that we, uh, I generate reports based on years, so uh, the 1st of Jan to 31st of December on any given year, but we can actually generate based on any date range you want uh, quite easily due to a script I wrapped around it. I've added a contributor account per organization. This was a suggestion by Otto from Amazon, in fact. Um, so while we're generating reports uh, for individuals and organizations. There is also a contributor account for that organization saying how many contributors came from, say, MariaDB Foundation, MariaDB Corporation, Amazon, et cetera. And a group organization uh, by type of organization. So everyone who is uh, a distribution such as uh, OpenBSD, FreeBSD, et cetera, they're all grouped together. Everyone who is a sponsor of MariaDB Foundation is grouped together. Um, and things like that, and then there's an other bucket for everyone else. Um, so the moment that's done via a script uh, afterwards, rather than the modification to Git DM, um, that can cause issues when someone moves organization from one place to another, but that's something we want to kind of uh, incorporate into Git DM in the future, and that way it, it'll be uh, a much more accurate response. So I actually keep in our, we, all this is open source. You can actually go to the metrics repo, get all this now. It has the configuration of who works, who we figured out what works for which company, et cetera. Uh, we also have pull request metrics. So this is almost a benchmark of me in a way. Um, we use the GitHub API to get the amount of total open pull requests. The, in, and in every, any given week, the 
amount of new open ones, new closed ones, um, and new merged ones. Um, so you give it a weak number and it will generate that report. Um, it takes a little bit of time to do it because we're rate limited on the GitHub API, but I made a few tricks to cut down the amount of requests needed. So I think it's only about six requests per week you need to do now or something like that. Um, so talking a bit about uh, metrics, I want to talk about a bit an anecdote, which will um, come clear in a minute. Uh, I worked on a project called Drizzle. Um, it started out life in uh, some microsystems as a fork of MySQL. Uh, I was a contributor there, but not uh, at Sun, but not a main uh, contributor. It was kind of a side thing while I was there. I eventually became an employee working for it. Uh, in 2009, the Drizzle project had a goal of 50% of the contributions should come from outside of Sun Microsystems. In 2010, 100% of contributions were outside of Sun because Oracle fired everyone. Um, <laughs> Rackspace then acquired them and it, it continued on, but you know it met the goal. But the point is, joking aside, it's great to have a high percentage of con contributors outside of the organization rather than internal. In 2022 so far, there are 35 contributors in the MariaDB Corporation, eight in the MariaDB Foundation, and 65 outside of the MariaDB circle. Um, obviously, these 65 are not producing anywhere like as much code, but it's great that we're getting this kind of diverse uh, contribution metric. And there's actually similar statistics in 2019 as well. Something happened in 2020, can't think what, but it did cause the external statistics to kind of drop a little bit. Um, I say most contributions still come from the MariaDB Corporation as far as actual code goes. So I can actually show you um, a little kind of summarized view here. Uh, as I said, in 2019, 2020, we got around 36. So the number of contributors from ReadyB Corporation and ReadyB Foundation stay pretty much static. But you can see we've had consistently um, a pretty high number, more than almost more than both combined every single year for the last four years. So it's pretty good. And 2022, I know we have some open pull requests right now by brand new contributors that have come in in the last couple of weeks. So I expect that 65 to be even higher by the end of the year. And if we dive a little bit more into contribution metrics for 2022 so far, this is where you can see where the actual commits are coming in here. So even though Readme Corporation has 35 hackers, if they've given 1,688 commits, nearly half a million lines of code added. Um, I have to separate lines of added removed he here because the way Git logs things, a change is there is a line removed and then added. So, but you could also just remove lines or just add lines. So I separate out lines added and removed. Um, and it does actually mean that uh, we've had more contributions from other contributors this year than we have the MariaDB Foundation, even though the Foundation has full-time staff working on MariaDB server. So uh, the final metric, this is going to be quite difficult to see here, but this is the open pull request metric. Uh, the bottom of the uh, y-axis is, you can see the number there is 80. Uh, so it doesn't go all the way down to zero, otherwise this would be a much taller chart. I joined at the first large peak there, and my goal has been trying to get it down, but I haven't gone and just closed everything. I've been talking to people, uh, trying to get pull requests uh, either moving along or if it's in a really bad state and we can't get hold of the contributor, I have eventually been closing them, but saying, you know, feel free to reopen this if you uh, want to continue with this contribution because, you know, we think it might be a good idea. Um, so things started dipping down. Um, I got really sick last month, so things started climbing again, but <laughs> I was in hospital a little bit. Uh, but And then I've been pre preparing for this, so things have kind of stagnated a bit, but I hope to start the decline again over the next month or so, and hopefully we can get it down. So right now, I think there's just over 100 open pull requests, and it peaked at nearly 120 at one point, so... It's, it's progress, it's not where I want it to be, uh, but it is progress. Uh, so talking about the metrics future, I want there to be 
Oh, and actually, this is something that was brought up in a Reading Foundation board meeting. I wanted to be a breakdown of Git contributions by module and engine, for example, uh, so we know uh, which corporations, which people are contributing to, say, InnoDB, Connect Engine, uh, Spider, etc. Um, so, sorry, a lot of background noise over there. <laughs> um, so we know. Um, who's contributing to what kind of thing. This was something that was brought up by the board. It will require probably a, uh, a larger modification to Git DM, but some of the framework there is already there to do it. We're, certainly the Git log already has this, so Git DM should be able to filter it. Um, we should be able to do this without too much difficulty. Uh, I want to log the average time to merge pull requests, probably both median and mean, because to start with, it's going to look quite messy because we will have a few that are merged and closed within days, and then we have a few that are merged and closed within four years. So <laughs> trying to get a balance there, at least kind of over the next couple of months, is going to be a bit messy, but it's something I should log along with these kind of charts. And then we want to merge these metrics into everything else, such as um, the metrics we already get on downloads and things like that. So we want all this. At the moment, it's in lots of different places. Um, there are community metrics as well um, on um, like forum posts and things like that, or mailing list posts. We can get um, Reddit, etc. So we can collate all this in one place and have a really diverse set of metrics as consumable and really show what the MariaDB Foundation is doing for everybody. And if there's any other metrics you want to see that we aren't doing yet, feel free to contact us, let us know, or contact me. Uh, this is how we got the um, kind of hack account in the uh, git commit metrics, was Otto mentioned it in a comment. And uh, I thought that was a great idea. So we started, we did it. And it only took a couple of hours for me to implement. So now I want to talk a bit about how to contribute code. I wrote a blog post by the Start again. I wrote a blog post about this, which you should totally check out. Um, I'm going to summarize it a little bit here. There's some basic steps to follow. And if you follow these steps, it helps reduce the round trip time between uh, you opening a pull request and review um, because there could be multiple back and forth. And uh, it helps us to stop rejecting things that we can never possibly accept because uh, I hate when we have to do that. Um, you know, people have put time and effort in and it's not just, it's just not going to fit or it's already being done somewhere else and you weren't aware that it was being done, done somewhere else. So there's some basic steps to follow. Uh, step one, talk to us. Uh, before you even start anything else, talk to us. We can guide you, we can help you with every step of the way. Um, the MariaDB team are approachable uh, via Jira and Zoomlip. Uh, I'm approachable. In particular, Vicentu, Daniel, and me, Kai called us the three musketeers of the MariaDB Foundation. Uh, you can talk to us particularly about any level of technical thing. I've got quite a diverse technical experience. I was the lead of the Column Store team at one point. So even though what I'm doing here today is quite high level, uh, I do have technical knowledge where I can help out. Tell us what you want to work on. Um, and we can say, yeah, that's excellent. Uh, if not, we can say, yeah, maybe you want to think about doing it this way. You know, there could be things you haven't thought about yet that uh, we can help you out with, angles you haven't thought of. Um, if you don't know what to work on, then take a look at JIRA and look for the beginner friendly tag. These are JIRA tickets that we've decided are going to be quite easy to pick up and start if you've never coded from ADB before. And again, we can walk you through this and how to work on them if, if you don't know yet. Uh, and if there isn't a Jira ticket for what you want to work on, feel free to open one. Uh, it, again, this helps us track things. Step two, code it up, write some code. Um, against the oldest affected release, if it's a bug release, or against the newest development version for new features. Um, this helps us, otherwise we've got to rebase it against those particular versions. Um, please stick to the same coding standards around surrounding code. You'll find that every storage engine probably has a different coding standard. Um, the coding standards aren't well documented yet. This is something I'm working on. There's actually a pull request that open right now for a coding standards document, which at least documents the basic um, ReadyB server code base, but there is more we could do there. Um, and there are some engines that don't um, connect engine, which I particularly work on, 
is not a great example because it mixes tabs and spaces a bit and things like that. But there's stuff we could clear up there. And um, but in general, try keep to the same coding standards that you can see around things. Add test cases. Um, test cases are really important. Um, not only because it makes sure that the code does what you says it does, um, but also it makes sure that someone doesn't commit something that's going to break what you did a year down the line. Um, run the MTR test suite locally. Um, it makes sure that there's nothing uh, that your code change breaks. It's very possible that you change one thing and it breaks something over here that you weren't expecting. Um, and it you could just use BuildBot to do that, but then that eats BuildBot resources. So running it locally first, at least is a first check to make sure everything is good before you actually open the pull request. And if it's a feature, uh, please write some documentation in the Jira ticket. Um, I know Ian will thank you very much, Lee, for having documentation that he can literally pot, copy and paste into knowledge base when it's ready. Step three, open a pull request. A form will pop up when you do this uh, in Markdown. Uh, filling this in will help us triage the pull request and fill out uh, and figure out the intention uh, of the pull request a lot easier. If it's your first time opening a pull request, a CLA assistant will pop up and say, please sign the CLA. You can click through this and sign the CLA. It will give you the documentation. You can click through and it will also ask you if you want to use the three clause BSD instead, or if you just want to contribute under the three clause BSD license, if you just declare that as a comment in the pull request, we can then accept it. Uh, BuildBot will run as soon as you open the pull request. Um, some of the builders will report directly to GitHub. Um, some of them are actually blocking. We won't be able to merge until they're actually green. So take a look what BuildBot reports. If it reports one as red, take a look as to why. We'll actually do a more in-depth look at BuildBot before uh, the code is actually, um, oh, as part of the review process. Uh, because there might be some esoteric builders that actually fail uh, in weird ways, and we can actually point you to these. Step four is the code review. So MariaDB Foundation and, and um, corporation engineers will actually review the code and give you feedback and advice. If we think the code is ready, ready we'll approve and merge it. Community members are also welcome to review and comment on the code, and it's another way you can contribute. Um, they won't be a uh, approver, as in they can tick it and then it gets merged. But you know their feedback actually helps us because they might spot something we miss. You know, um, reviewers miss things sometimes. Um, and if we're taking our time to review a pull request, uh, we're dropping the ball. Tag me at Linux Jedi in it, and uh, I will try and get it escalated. We've got quite a large backlog right now, so it's very easy to miss things. And it might not be me or anyone in the foundation reviewing it. Uh, if it's an ODB thing, I may be able to get Paul Marco in to review it or something like that. But I'll be able to pull in, we'll be able to pull in the right kind of people to review your pull request. And that is all I have. So, uh, questions? I was just wondering, does it happen often that somebody is contributes a pull request and then there is review input and they just don't react to it or just don't either not have the time or capacity or desire to sort of come up bring the pull request up to the standard okay so yeah the, the if someone contributes something uh but they don't have the time to bring it up to standard based on the feedback um, because there's two different ways you go there. If they just completely blank us after that, which can happen for a variety of reasons. They might have moved on to a different company and it was a corporate contribution or whatever. Uh, in that case, and I think in the case where they don't have the time, then we can get, and we have done this before, we get MariaDB engineers to take that commit and then add commits after that to clean up the pull request ready for merging. Um, we've done that quite recently for some uh, Debian uh, changes that were almost ready, but needed uh, to fix some issues with RPM packaging. So uh, we can add, so your contribution is still there. It's still tagged as you, you'll still be in the metrics, but we'd also add additional commits to fix things up. Yeah, and I, I'd like to add that we even get ideas of features from contributions that don't get initially merged. That is true. So we actually have one uh, engineer now, Anel, working on uh, aliases for uh, MySQL client and that was uh, 
a contribution from back in 2016, I think. It wasn't ready. We didn't get time to merge it. Eventually, the pull request was closed, but we didn't abandon the idea. So um, even if uh, your code is not complete, we it's still worth uh, getting us to look at it. Absolutely. And like I say, this is the whole thing I said before about you know talking to us, keeping the dialogue open, you know, and if you're in over your head, you know, definitely talk to us. You know, we can help you out in one way or another, particularly at the foundation, uh, but also we can pull in corporation resources if need be, if they if it's something that they are interested in as well. So, Andrew, do you have questions for somebody in this audience? Uh I that's a really good question. <laughs> Um, what would you like to see from us? What would you, I mean? Honestly, we we need feedback on the process. Um, so uh, I don't know if we've got any. We haven't got any external cont contributors yet in the audience. Um, but uh, certainly from the wider audience, if there is part of the process that you think needs improving, let us know. There are things that I definitely want to get improved. Um, I know the CLA process right now is not great, um, and we know this, and we are we have some background work going on to improve this. Um, there are several other things as well I can think of, um, such as the review process. We we can tighten things up with a formalization of processes and things like that. So there are there are definitely things that we need feedback on. I want to know what we're getting wrong and what we're getting right. And I want to add one uh, more thing. We off, we every year have been part of Google Summer of Code, and a big chunk of the contributions have been part, uh, submitted by students working um, during Google Summer of Code. And I think roughly one in five of these students are um, end up being employed by the corporation or the foundation. Mm -hmm. So we you get. Happen to be one of them. I, I happen to be one of them. <laughs> so, um, so I initially contributed roles back in 2013. So that was fun. Yep. Um, so, uh, if uh, anyone is um, interested in uh, applying for this, know that Google Summer of Code now is not no longer open just for students. It's also open for professionals that have not worked in open source before, and that they might be interested in working for an open source uh, company in the future. It is a fantastic uh, project. Uh, for those who don't know about it, Google essentially pays well students, but I guess it's. Uh, every every day contributors people now, they call it they call it now to actually contribute uh, code uh, for a specific project over the summer. Um, I've been a mentor for it before uh, for two different uh, open source projects, um, and it's a really great thing. It, it gets people into the industry and uh, it gets us new co contributions that we wouldn't have been able to work on otherwise. And it's actually quite a big category in your categorizations of, of lines of code. Yeah, uh, in the deeper metrics, so I publish metrics quarterly, so the next one will be coming out beginning in December-ish. Uh, there is a category just for Google Summer of Code contributions because it's big enough to be it's a category in its own right. Thank you. Uh, would it be of your interest to this idea uh, to uh, offer uh, the best contribution, uh, some uh, reward. So, yes. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely something I want to do. So um, before I joined the Moody Foundation, I was at Wolf SSL. And uh, I'd actually contributed to Wolf SSL before. And they sent me quite randomly a, a, a drinking glass branded and some stickers in the post, which I was not expecting at all, but it's a really good thing you know and it, it, it helps I think it helps engage dialogue as well so I definitely want to I need to talk to Anna about this but I definitely want some kind of swag to happen for first-time contributors so um, I really want to make it happen watch this space and <laughs> see if we can make it happen uh, so one other thing we haven't talked about is we also have a hacker one program where we encourage uh, security researchers to try and break either MariaDB or MariaDB.org. Uh, so we currently don't offer swag for uh, those so sorts of uh, bug reports, but as Andrew mentioned, that might be on the table. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, you still get reputation and you can earn, um, let's say, credibility within the security space if you submit uh, reports to us. Absolutely. Uh, that's, again, the HackerOne's a fantastic project. Um, 
It was started by uh, the ex CEO of MySQL. So, you know, uh, great stuff there. Okay, Andrew, thanks a lot. Very, very clear presentation on how to contribute to MariaDB. Thank, Thank you. you.